Welcome back to BrandRepublic.tv. My name is Philip Smith and this show is going to focus on creativity and TV advertising. According to some of the most influential people in advertising, what you're about to see is the best ad on television at the moment. That was Enjoy the Everyday for Volkswagen Golf, which the Thinkbox Academy group of judges made the inaugural winner of the Thinkboxes in May. So it seems timely to talk about the power of television advertising and creativity. We've got some exclusive behind the scenes footage of making the ad to show you. And in the studio today, I'm delighted to welcome Stephen Woodford, Chairman and CEO, DDB UK, and Graham Hall, who is the creative on VW Golf, Enjoy the Everyday. Welcome to the BrandRepublic.tv studio, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you. Congratulations on the award. Thank you. I suppose it's, um, it's, it's clearly a busy time for VW. It's clearly a busy time for the automotive industry. What about the competition for creativity at the moment? Is that as high as ever? I think the competition for creativity has never been more intense, and that's through a whole combination of factors. One is the car market's never been more competitive. The quality of products has never been as high. Uh, and the difference between the best and the worst in the market is, is almost negligible now. So increasingly it's about brands and uh, people are buying on the strength of the brand. And I think you put that together with the media fragmentation that's going on, it means that to really cut through, to engage with people and to influence people, you've got to have the very best levels of creativity. And uh, because people can opt in and opt out. Uh, so we've got to make, th make sure we're creating things that people want to engage with and watch, not just only in t television but also in terms of other media too. Yeah, I, th I think from my point of view, the, the audience has become much more media savvy um, with the proliferation of uh, online and YouTube and, and, uh, and technology that allows people to actually make their own movies. It's, they, the level has now been set a lot higher, um, so we have to live up to that, and I think you know, it's, 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 it's great, it's brilliant. On the back of that, Graham, though, it's, uh, we do hear a lot about media fragmentation. As a creative, does television still get your creative juices going? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, 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 for me, it's the best medium to tell a story. Um, and I think the best ads are entertainment, as well as trying to obviously sell a product. They are, they are entertainment. You're taking time out of, of someone's of, uh, life, so you've got to give them something. Um, I mean, it does depend on the idea. Don't get me wrong. If, if the idea is best suited to TV, then go for it. If, if there are other mediums that, that are kind of uh, more suited, then, then we explore those, I think. I mean, I think from our point of view, we, we, we're working in every single medium, online, offline, old, new. Uh, so we're completely ambivalent about where the work shows. But we, we, what we found is the best combination really is the, is the, the power of broadcast uh, com combined with the power of the internet. So online, offline is, is absolutely the dream combination. And we've seen that particularly on Volkswagen, where we do a great piece of work on, uh, on, on television and we see immediately it's picked up online, we see it's posted on YouTube, we see comments being posted, we see it being passed on and it's this fantastic amplification that we get uh, which, which requires the very best creativity. People are only going to do that if it's worthwhile. We've got to make something that people want to work with and engage with and, and in a sense uh, it's part of the, there's, a, there's a dialogue that goes on between the interaction between the consumers and the work that we make and we love seeing uh, lots and lots of YouTube activity around a, around a piece of work. We sort of know within within a day really whether something's going to take off or not. In the case of uh, uh, Enjoy the Everyday and also the, the, the Singing Dog ad, we found that people really engaged with those mm. and, and they took off online as well as uh, through, through uh, broadcast. Of course. And I, I suppose as you can't see different media in isolation now, um, you also can't see creativity in isolation. And as someone who's a former president of the IPA, I guess you must also be thinking about the effectiveness of that creativity. Is that something that still has to drive you? It, it is absolutely what drives us because ultimately at the end of the day we're here to sell and that's uh, the be all and end all. If it sells, it's successful, uh, we're successful. If it, it, you know, we can have a piece of work that might be judged to be creatively uh, uh, successful but if it doesn't actually sell the product at the end of the day, you know, it's irrelevant. 
So we're absolutely driven around sales, and we do know from all of our various studies, we do huge amounts of work on effectiveness awards, we've studied the data bank and all those sorts of things, that there's very, very high correlations between creativity and effectiveness. The two things go hand in hand. Of course. And um, it's something that, of course, the client must be demanding to see about. But, of course, Volkswagen this month must be very happy because Volkswagen and DDB were also behind the work for Polo Dog, which came second in the think boxes. Cars are very much on our mind as Audi's gymnast spot came third. Earlier, however, I spoke to Dylan Harrison, one of the creatives at DDB London, behind the VW Polo Dog, and this is what he had to say. So there's uh, a number of elements to the ad. Um, there's uh, confidence, there's a singing dog, um, there's uh, um, that great track, uh, I'm a Man. Um, I guess uh, they're all serving the big idea of, of confidence. Uh, Volkswagen has always been an, a brand that, that doesn't sort of advertise hunks of metal as, as cars. You know, they, they advertise what they mean to people. And so in that tone of voice, we wanted to talk about, I guess, what uh, a small, safe car means to people. And uh, they've been going on about how you sort of feel protected in Apollo for so many years now. We felt it was time to move that on a little bit. And so we tried to communicate that feeling of confidence. And we could have done that um, by uh, actually having a character who was a person who was shy and retiring outside of the car. But when they were in the car, they really felt confident and relaxed and unguarded. And uh, we were thinking about what, what's, the, uh, what's the thing that you do you know, that when, you're, uh, when, you're, when you're confident. And one of those things, it's like when you're in the shower in the morning, you just sing and you just belt out a song completely unguarded. Well, that's a sure sign of confidence. So we kind of thought, well, there's something in that. You know, it's going to make a good film of someone who sings in the car. But it's you know, perhaps not as interesting if, you just, if we're just seeing this, an actor doing this. So uh, we decided it'd be funnier if it was a dog. And uh, I guess it's based on a human insight, and then the dog was just for entertainment. The aim of the ad is, uh, well, I guess there's a number of levels. I mean, first and foremost, we want to sell more cars. So amongst small cars, if people believe when they get into a, a, a Polo that they feel safer and feel more confident, then surely that's a good thing. But beyond that, there's always a, um, a brand job to, to do with uh, TV advertising for Volkswagen as well. And uh, we want to speak to people in an intelligent, um, yet you know, uh, entertaining way, I guess, uh, which kind of reflects the values of the brand so that when they do see a Volkswagen, whether it's a Polo or a Golf or any of the other cars of the fleet, they still have this kind of uh, feeling of, of good intention and goodwill towards the brand because they enjoy the advertising. I'm not sure whether I'd uh, ever draw a direct line between the uh, sales of, off the forecourt of cars and, uh, the, um, and the ads that we do. Uh, I mean, there's so much that goes on um, in terms of sort of buying a, buying a car. It's such a big decision. It's such a big expense for people. I mean, next to buying a house, it's, uh, it's probably the most expensive thing that people ever buy. So, uh, you know, things such as the product and the competition, what's happening in the market, there's so much stuff that actually kind of goes into that choice. But I like to think that uh, between... Um, equal offerings, people would feel um, a sort of an emotional affinity towards Volkswagen because of the advertising. That would count for something in their choice, as well as just getting footfall into, uh, into the, the dealerships and getting people to try a Volkswagen. Do creatives, uh, ever ha uh, bleh. Do creatives have to work harder than they ever did before? Uh, I, think that, um, I think that being creative uh, um, to the end of actually having a brand that cuts through um, stands out, um, presenting ideas that are original, relevant and, uh, and entertaining. I think it's always been difficult and uh, I think that with um, more media options that we have now, uh, there is more opportunity to uh, speak to consumers and uh, there's more opportunity to be creative in using that media. But I think, uh, um, as always, it's a, it's a pretty hard job to have something that, that ends up pretty special. And of course the soundtrack to that, I'm a Man, is by the Spencer Davis Group. However, Orbital's Paul Hartnell did the soundtrack for Enjoy the Everyday. We've got a little clip about behind the scenes here, hearing a little bit of another soundtrack from him, and this is how he put it together. Let's have a look. How did it come about? It just came through a guy that, that I know called Mick, who just said, I've got this possible ad job for you, based on editing sound from, you know, shot film, turning it into a piece of music. You know, are you interested? So I, I was. Got the green light and got told to pack my bag and fly to Cape Town. But they're not in this. I'm oh, big oh, Hello, good morning. You. Hey. Oh, no, they're not in this. I'm oh, big oh, no, they're not in this. I'm oh, big oh. Well, 
I enjoyed that. I'm sure you're both big Orbital and Raid music fans, of course. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Well, one of the things, of course, that stands out as we talk about these, these two bits of creativity in these ads is um, the fact that one is reliant on a, a, a quite a famous track with I'm a Man. You've also got something where you've put a lot of effort, clearly, with Paul into the music and into the way the soundtrack was put together. Does that mean that now TV advertising has to think more about the music and the accompaniment with it and, and the soundtrack that there is to the ad? Um, it's quite a strange question for me. I, I think, you know, um, creators have always thought about uh, the role of music and how important it is. Um, I think, for me personally, it's, it's, it's a matter of whether it's suited to the idea or, or it helps the idea. That's the most important thing. Um, if it's just as a gloss to, uh, to um, kind of polish a bad idea, then, then there's, there's no reason for it. So I think it's got to play a fundamental role within the adverts. It's got to be a character of sorts. Um, and I, I think that's um, you know, the most important thing to, to take into consideration with music, I think. I just, think just to add to that, I think there's, you know, there, are, there are ads that lean on the music and they depend on the music to get the cut through. Or there are ads, like, like I think these two, where the music is an amplification of the idea. And I think with, uh, with Polo, we had a great sing-along track, which actually caught the character of the, the mood of the, the ad brilliantly, uh, and has become a hit on the back of it. And I think with Golf, you know, we went to great effort to create something live out of, the tra uh, out of the shoot itself. We had no idea really what we were going to be coming back with. We knew what we were aiming for. Sounds like true creativity. Well, I think there was a, yeah. there was a really uh, you know, exciting sort of experimental part of that because the director was a, a young pop promo director. I don't think, had he done any ads before? I'm not sure. Uh, he's done a few. But, but you know, a young nice guy, scale. great production company uh, and you know, clearly great musician in terms of uh, Paul Hartnell on the shoot. But I think the, the thing that was really exciting about that was that piece of music captures something fundamental about the golf. You know, it's built on the sort of thunk of the door as it closes, and that becomes the rhythm track, and then the, all the ambient sound creates a, a really good piece of music. And that was, a, I think, a brilliant metaphor for, for the experience of owning a golf, because a golf is a rewarding, subtle thing to own over time. And I should know, because I drive one, so <laughs> I feel very passionate about this. Uh, and I think that, that, that's a really good example of a piece of music being a brilliant amplification of an idea. And that's why we're so pleased that it got recognised by Thinkbox. Of course. And in terms of um, the idea about a soundtrack coming from ambient noise or, or being very creative in that way, um, I could think of some ads that, that um, have, have used some ideas like that. But obviously, you've created something new. Do you now feel that uh, you know, the ultimate recognition is to see a horde of imitators and that you'll expect to see things like this tried again? I'd love it. I think it'd be great. I mean, it's, if, if there's imitation, it shows that people have taken it to heart and they actually love the advert and they want to replicate it. Um, I think I wouldn't like to see it replicated by another advert. I think that's not really what it's all about. I think, I think that you know, we're doing this for the consumer and if, if we're entertaining them and they, they really um, kind of own the ad, then th that's great. We've done our job. And you know, move on to the next one. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we look forward to seeing what comes next. That's, I'm afraid, is all we've got time for at the moment. Keep an eye out at the end of June for the next Think Boxes winner. And of course, keep an eye out for our next show at BramRepublic.tv. I want to thank everyone at DDB for that behind the scenes look at Enjoy the Everyday. And of course, I want to thank Dylan and Stephen and Graham for meeting me in the studio. I would also like to thank our partners at the IPA, everyone at Thinkbox. And I want to look forward to seeing you next time.